hey what's up folks this is gk so in this video i'm gonna show you how i have deployed this sample php app inside the cloud run using a docker container obviously and then this is connecting to the mysql database using the cloud sql so this tutorial is not to teach you php or any such programming or mysql or anything but this is focused on how you can deploy a sample php application inside the cloud run and connect to the mysql database now you can replicate the same tutorial to create any php based application uh, as long as you are able to dockerize that and use it as a container and run it inside the cloud run so before i get into the tutorial i would highly recommend following only the documentation whenever you're following this tutorial especially the documentation that is given in the google cloud uh, documentation for both cloud run how to deploy the php based cloud run and as well as you know connecting from cloud run to the cloud sql uh, from the cloud run you can easily connect to the cloud sql without running the sql proxy inside the container so previously it, the way it used to work is you had to run the sql proxy inside the container and then using the sql proxy you would connect to the cloud sql but now it is very simple and you don't have to do that i'm going to paste these two links in the description but first things first i'm using the same docker file that was described in the documentation that was to deploy a sample php application so this docker file doesn't have some modules that are required for example the pdo is in there in this which i had to add so i made few modifications to make this docker file applicable for our tutorial all right so before we do anything the first step that we have to make sure is permissions if you do not follow this carefully and do not add the right permissions you will end up like me wasting a lot of hours and you know get into a situation where you will not understand what you have done wrong in the logs and you will go back to a lot of browsing and searching and you'll finally fix the issue but basically first we need to enable the sql admin api uh, for that you, you can copy this url and change the project id or you can go to the apis from the console itself so go to the console and go to the apis and services once you're in the right project make sure that you know you selected the right project and then you go to the apis and services and search for sql admin it's not here you have searched in the library you have to search in the library which is sql admin click on this and here by default it would be disabled if you haven't enabled so click on enable and if it is enabled you will see that api is enabled uh, second thing is the cloud run runs using the compute service account so that service account should have the cloud sql client enabled because obviously you know the cloud run is trying to connect to the sql uh, you have to have the permission to the service account which cloud run is running on so go to the iam from here go to the iam and compute at the right developer g service account so this is the main thing so this already has the editor so it, it should cover all the permissions but if you have if you do not have that you know just add that and make sure that it has the cloud sql client permission or if you want to use any other service account make sure that it has the cloud sql client permission for that and once these permissions are set you're good to go so these are the critical months that you need to make sure and there is another thing that i'm going to show you when i'm deploying the cloud run okay so now first things first we need to create the cloud sql which here is going to be my sql so go to cloud sql and uh, create an instance i'm going to select my sql for this because often in the internet you would use mostly php and mysql for wordpress or for any such you know applications so that's why i've used this tutorial for mysql but you can use any sql of your choice so i have already done this if you do not know how to do this go back to my previous tutorial on how i have used cloud sql when i was trying to connect from app engine once you have the instance created you will see something like this with the public ip address because here i'm using a public ip you can use private ip as well if you want to connect from your cloud run to the sql over a private ip 
but the only thing that you need to make sure there is you need to use a serverless VPC connector, which I will try to explain in the future tutorials. But for now, we're going to use public IP here. So this is the connection name. This is another important thing to remember. Okay, so once you have the instance created, you can connect using the cloud shell. So once you click on this option, connect using the cloud shell, I'm gonna open this in a new tab, close everything else. Okay, so it is trying to use uh, the root user, but what I have done was I have created one more user which is called a sample user. So sample will get this first time raise this one. So let me quickly show you what I have inside my SQL instance. So show databases. So I've created a test database. I'm gonna use test and I have created one table my guests which has bunch of names which I was showing you at the start of the video. So select star from my guests. So now we're going to extract the whole data from this table and display it on my PHP application which is going to run in the cloud run inside a Docker container. So two things that I would highly recommend is open a cloud shell or open in a new window so that it will be easy for you to do things instead of uh, having a minimized version of that. And then here, I'll create a sample directory, which I've created as a hello world hyphen PHP. And this is also mentioned in the documentation. Once you are in the directory, you have to create a couple of files. Obviously you have to create a PHP file. The most important thing is the Docker file. So this Docker file is also the modified version of the Google Cloud documentation, which I'm going to paste the link in the description. So this is the Docker file that we have used. But this Docker file doesn't have the PDO module, which I had to install, which I'm going to show you right now. So before I do that, I have to set the project here gcloud config set project and then project YouTube. No. All right, so that is set. Now to do the modifications or to create the Docker file or even change a PHP file or create a PHP file, use the editor. To open the editor, so go to the right top corner and you will see open editor here. Click on that. So what that would do is that would open the cloud shell editor. And this is extremely useful when you are trying to modify the code or when you're trying to do anything uh, with the files. So either you can do it with the VI in the cloud shell, which is going to be a little cumbersome, or you would, you know, do it in the editor, which is what I prefer. So here I'm going to open the Docker file. As soon as you open the file here, you can make changes and it will be saved in the cloud shell as well. So this Docker file is using the Docker image 7.4 Apache, which has Apache and which is going to use PHP 7.4 version. And it is using bunch of modules, which is already was there which was already there in the documentation but i'm adding additional module pdo which is which is required for our application our php application to connect to the mysql and then i'm copying the index.php file and the other php file which is important because this is where i have the code of connecting to the mysql instance and one thing to note and the most important thing is you do not want to use any other ports because you have to strictly abide by the contract of container which is well defined for the cloud run containers and all how you want to define the ports so that's why this step is already mentioned in the documentation which is you're going to replace the port 80 with the dollar port so if you're using a php based application or with apache you know use this step in your docker file as well especially for the cloud run so that's about the docker file it's a very simple docker file you're going to build a container if you want to have anything else, you can add it here for your uh, application based on your needs. For me, this is pretty much enough. So let's look at index.php. It has just uh, hello GK, nothing much here. For the test app.php, this is where we have the actual code that is connecting to MySQL. Here I have hard coded the username, password in the 
in the plain text which is not recommended at all i mean this is a this is not at all recommended if you are trying to build a php application especially for your production environments or even for the development environments so the best way of doing this is using the secrets manager google cloud secrets manager where there is already a service for that in the google cloud and i'm going to come up in the future demo or in the future tutorial how to integrate a cloud run php application or anything and save your secrets in the secrets manager but for now for this tutorial i'm just saving it here in the plain text and this is the sql connection name which you have already seen here in the connections sorry in the hope in the overview page you will see a connection name so this is what we're going to use for this one and this is as an environment variable so i'm going to pass that while i'm deploying the cloud run and the socket directory and this is the most important thing so previously if you see a lot of tutorials on the cloud run connecting to sql there are a bunch of tutorials everywhere on net they were asking us to create a cloud proxy but now after the cloud run has become GA and it started supporting the cloud SQL, you do not have to create any cloud proxies or SQL proxies to connect to a cloud SQL. So it will take care of creating that socket directory. It uses Unix socket connection type to connect to the SQL. So it will create inside this directory, you will have a subdirectory with the cloud SQL connection name. But that's again taken care by the cloud run. We do not have to do anything with respect to the socket directory. So leave this as default. And here you would, you know, give uh, the DSN, all the things that you are mentioned here. And then you're going to do a new PDO with the DSN username and password. The query is pretty straightforward. First name, last name from my table, my guests. So that's pretty much it. That That's a simple PHP code. But you can, again, like I've said, you can replicate the same thing when you're trying to deploy a complex PHP application and trying to connect to Cloud SQL. So with that, our next step is to actually build the docker file and then build it and commit it to the container registry let's do that so this is the command and you can go from the console to the container registry and as you can see here we already have a bunch of images I already have test app image but it's going to create another version of test app i mean basically if if there is a image already of test app it's going to create another image with the latest tag I'm going to run this and pause the video and resume it once this is done all right now we are done with building the docker file if you go back to the console and refresh this page you would see a newer version of the docker image this is the latest version that we're going to use and deploy uh, to the cloud run so the command to deploy is gcloud run deploy and this is the image that we're going to use from the gcr.io the platform is manage cloud run and here this is the most important thing that you're going to tell that uh, the cloud run is going to connect to the cloud sql instances so this is where a lot of people got issues on net if you do not add this you know you cannot connect to the cloud sql so make sure that you know you are properly noting down this command basically it is add sql instances and then youtube demo which is the connection name that you can get from the sql console and then here the environment variables is cloud sql connection that we have used in our php file which is what we are mentioning here again copy the whole thing and here paste it so before I create a service name, let me quickly show you what we have in the cloud run. Cloud run. I do not have any services at the moment. I have deleted all of them. So you will see this as a blank page, even if you do not have any service here. And now, so it's asking us to give a service name. You can leave this as a default or you can give whatever you want and then enter. It's asking us to choose the region. So it's better to choose the region as same as your SQL instance because that way you do not have latency issues. I'm going to choose 18. Allow unauthenticated invocation is basically telling that, you know, you can connect to this application, PHP application without any authentication. So you can say yes for now or you can 
they know and you can use you can use service account or other forms of authentication now this is going to deploy the new service you copy this thing and open in an incognito window you'll see that this triggered obviously when you when you do not give any slash you know that apache defaults to the index.php that's what we had in the code for index.php now i'm opening test app.php that's the actual php file that is connecting to the cloud sql perfect so this worked and you can see this is talking to the cloud sql and getting all the information from the table so now if we go back to the cloud run if i refresh this you will see the new service and click on the test app there is only one revision but you can add multiple revisions like you can add another version and then you can split the traffic like in the app engine case and you can do all that good stuff in the cloud run as well and here the port is 8080 and the container entry point etc and here variables is what you have passed from the command line that you can see here that's been used inside your container so this is important you can also pass you know uh, user id or password and stuff but again it will be in the plain text it's better to integrate that with the secrets manager and the connections and yaml so the other thing is you can see the service account that it is using is a default compute service account so this this service account should have the permission to uh, talk to the cloud sql all right folks so that's all i have for this video i wanted to help you out to you know create a php applications in cloud run and connect to the cloud sql i hope this video is going to help you to do that and let me know in the comment sections if you have any issues while following this or let me know uh, if you have run into any issues so thank you so much for watching this video and give it a like if you like this video and do subscribe to my channel so that we can do awesome stuff together thank you all take care bye